Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant. And in this Tag Manager Masterclass, you're going to learn how to install every single code and pixel on your site that you'd ever need using Google Tag Manager, including how to set up your conversion tags and troubleshoot when you have errors. So detailed timestamps below if you need to skip to a specific section. And here's the timestamp if you want to skip the introduction and go straight into installing it on your WordPress site or your page builder. So let's go ahead, jump right in here. What on earth is Google Tag Manager and why why should you even go through doing all this? Well, think of Google Tag Manager as your giant virtual file cabinet. It helps you simplify, organize, integrate, and track all in one place. And you'll see when we set up conversion tracking, this is going to be very, very helpful because no matter what platform you're using, you can set up a conversion event once and then have that it send that information out to all of your different platforms. And so we are going to be taking all of the pixels and tags and custom tracking codes that you have on your site right now, or you might be installing in the future, and we're going to put them all inside of Tag Manager. Now, as we go through this, it's very important, nothing is retroactive here. So you want to make sure that you are slow and methodical because you only have one shot when it comes to your tracking. No matter what platform it is, if it's installed incorrectly, you can miss data or you could double count data, which is why you need to figure out where all of your tracking codes are right now. Because when you're done with this video, you need to remove all those other ones so you don't have two tags or pixels firing at the same time, sending double the amount of information. That's not fun at all. There's nothing retroactive here. So here's what we're going to do. First, we will create your account. We'll put the tag code on your website website before we make any modifications to it, verify that it's there, and then start adding your tags and pixels inside of Tag Manager. Now, when you go to create your account, there are a couple levels you need to be aware of. So you can create one account for your business or your businesses, and then you're going to be creating something called containers, and a container equals one website. So all of your codes will go inside of that container, and that container is your file cabinet, your virtual file cabinet, that will be on your website. Now, what's very important is if you have a lot of different, let's say page builders, you're using WordPress site and then you're using something else for your landing pages, or you just have multiple websites, you should only have one tag or pixel in one container. So you should not have the same code or pixel in multiple containers. If that's something that's going on, that is not the best practice to go with. So now let's jump over to the Tag Manager website. You can go ahead and sign in if you already have an account. If you don't, just go ahead and click start for free. Go ahead and use the same Gmail address you use for business. This does not have to be the same address you use for all of your Google Ads accounts or your YouTube channel or your Google Analytics. You can connect multiple, you can have multiple sign-ins for those. So um, you're not locked in if you use the wrong address here. And you can always add more later, but let's go ahead and sign in. So assume that you were able to sign in okay. And then you'll see, I already have an account set up, but we're going to go ahead and create an account from scratch. So I'll click on create account here. And when you do, you'll go ahead and give your account a name. So this is the very, very top level. So this should be the name of your company, not your website yet. And then of course, you'll go ahead and choose your country. I just normally leave the uh, anonymously shared data unchecked. And then you can come down here to container setup. So you'll have multiple containers inside of your account. And then we'll go ahead and give our container a name. This should be your website name. So that's what we'll do here. Fresh Fans Academy will be our website. And then of course we'll select website because that's the type of container we are setting up here. So we'll come down here and click on create and then they'll ask us to accept their policies and data processing. And then we can go ahead and click on yes. And once we do, our new container will have been made. So we made an account and inside of that account we have one container. You can have multiple containers because you can have multiple websites and multiple domains. I like doing one container per domain, although I'll leave that up to you how you ultimately decide to organize things. So I'm just going to assume you have one domain and one website right now. So this is the code that's going to go on your site. This is the one code to rule them all. You're going to put some code in the header tag and the body and the top of the body tag. Now, don't worry. We're not doing any HTML here. It's literally just going to be copy and paste. We don't need to know a line of code. We, you don't need to understand what is going on here. You'll just be able to copy and paste this. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And if you ever need to get back to that screen, all you need to do is come up here and click on your Tag Manager ID. 
and that pop-up will come up. Now, before we jump over to actually adding this to our website, I highly recommend you copy and paste this and put it into some sort of internal documentation. This can be a simple Excel sheet or a Google Doc, or you can check out the link in the description to our Tag Manager playbook. It's actually the exact same template that we use to stay organized with our Tag Manager installs and make sure all of our codes and confirmation URLs are working correctly. So you can go ahead and just take this code, paste it into the Tag Manager playbook or your own documentation, link in the description to learn more about that. So the reason that this is so important is this code needs to go on every single page of your site, whether you're using a WordPress site, you're using a page builder like Squarespace or Wix or GoDaddy or whatever <laughs> else is out there. I'll be using MailerLite as an example. And so what we'll do is you need to look for your page options or theme settings or custom analytics or scripts or tracking codes, some sort of advanced section where you're going to be able to put this on your site. You should not have to open up the HTML of your website in order to do this. So first we're going to go through how to do this on WordPress. I'll show you how to find it inside of your theme or your page builder plugin. And then I'll go through using a WordPress plugin that's actually designed to allow you to easily put Tag Manager across your entire site. Then we'll go through an example from MailerLite, which should mirror a lot of the page builders out there. So let's go ahead, jump on over into WordPress here. And we'll start with the simpler method, which is using a free plugin to add it to all of your pages on your site. This is also helpful if you want to do some data layer things in the future, which is advanced. So we'll go ahead and click on plugins here. We will click on add new. And then in the search, we will just search Tag Manager. And the second one is the one you want to install. So you'll go ahead and click on install now and then it will be active. And so we can click over here on settings and you'll see Tag Manager has been added to your settings. So when we click on that, you'll need your Tag Manager ID. So what's nice about using this plugin is you don't even have to deal with the header and body tag. It figures out where to put it correctly on your site. So if we go back over to Tag Manager here, we actually only need this code, our Tag Manager ID, not all of the HTML. So we'd go ahead and copy that and we paste it in there and we click on save changes. And now it is on your website. So we'll go through how to verify that it was actually installed correctly. So now let's jump over to what to do if you're using a page builder and then we'll go back to another WordPress example. Here I'm going to be using MailerLite, but this is going to be a very similar process no matter what page builder you are using. So let's go over to MailerLite. You're going to be looking for analytics, tracking, custom codes, scripts. So here I am on sites inside of MailerLite. I'm looking at my different websites here and I'm going to edit Fresh Fans Academy because that's where I want this code to go. So I'll go ahead to click to edit it here. And when I do, the back end settings will load. So I'm going to scroll down. I'll go ahead and click on edit here. And then I'm going to scroll down again and I'll be able to click on analytics and custom codes. And you'll see that your page builder will probably give you some sort of options to just paste in Google Analytics or paste in the Facebook pixel, which is great. And it's great when you're just getting started, but because you're watching this, you want to actually use Tag Manager because it's going to give you so much more control in the future. So we'll go ahead and scroll down and you'll see we have a place for the header injection and we have a page code injection that goes at the top of the body tag of the website. And so we'll go over to Tag Manager here. We'll copy this top part and then we will paste it where the header code is. So top is header, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then the bottom is going to be at the opening of the body tag or just the body tag, the body of the actual website. So we'll go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it in here or you can just copy it from your documentation or the Tag Manager playbook if you decided to check that out in the description. And then we can go ahead and click on save and continue. And once we do, Tag Manager is on our website. Now, if you're using a landing page builder like MailerLite or Lead Pages or one of the other popular ones, you might have to do this for every single landing page that you set up. Um, so you do wanna make sure that whatever web page builder that you're using, that Tag Manager does go across all of your pages and it doesn't always universally copy over to your other pages in your page builder. So I'll get off that. Let's go ahead, jump back over to WordPress here. I'm going to be using Thrive Themes as an example, but 
but whatever theme you're using, this should be helpful. So let's go ahead, jump back into our WordPress dashboard and I'm going to click on the Thrive dashboard and then I'm going to click on theme settings. Now inside of theme settings, I have analytics and scripts. So you're looking for something similar in your theme settings, whatever WordPress plugin you are using. And once we click on that, you'll see we have a header script, opening script, and a body script. Now, if you just have a body script, that's okay. Uh, here, Thrive Themes, it's more conversion focused, so they know people people want uh, the ability to edit the opening, the opening at the very top of the body tag. Not super important here. So let's go ahead, we'll copy for the header tag and for the body tag, and we'll paste both those in, and then we'll click on Save Changes. Now, what's important here is you either use the plugin or you go to your theme settings. Now, I like using the plugin because it makes sure that it does go on every single page. And if you're using a page builder, you're using some other plugins, it's much more likely to not get in, not be blocked or actually be on each page of your website. But of course, this is an option as well. So that's three different ways you can install the Tag Manager code on your site. So now we need to make sure that it's actually there <laughs> before we add anything, right? So let's go ahead and verify and install. If you're still watching, getting some value, go and hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe for more deep dive videos just like this one. Let's go ahead and make sure Tag Manager is installed correctly using the Tag Assistant plugin. And this is a Chrome plugin. So we'll just go to Google, search for Google Tag Assistant, not to be confused with Tag Assistant that's now preview mode. If that didn't make any sense, that's okay. We'll get to that. So strap in, we, we've got a lot to do here. So let's go ahead and add to Chrome. So when I click add to Chrome, I'm going to have to, of course, accept all these, just leave all of these checked and we'll go ahead and click on done. And then whenever you want to use it on a web page, you're going to need to click on the plugin click enable and then refresh the page. So if I go to our website, this is the website example that I just did for Mailer Lite. So what we can do is we can click on the tag manager icon, tag assistant icon up here, and we'll go ahead and click on enable. And when we do, it's going to tell us that we need to refresh the page. So when I refresh the page, and refresh the page, you'll see now I can actually see the tag manager code that we installed. Now, red is obviously bad. <laughs> that means something's wrong. We want this to be green or blue. Yellow is kind of okay. It's like, eh, it might be working, but red just means, hey, something's wrong and you need to fix it. Now, if we go ahead and click on the code here, we'll see that it's red because it didn't actually fire, it didn't do anything. It's just telling us, hey, Tag Manager's here, but it didn't do anything because there's nothing in Tag Manager, so it shouldn't do anything. And so if you see this error aborted when you first install Tag Manager, that's okay, it'll go away once you install your first tag. So don't freak out, you haven't done anything wrong. It's there, it's, it's ready to work, but it needs a job to do. And so let's go ahead and give it a job with Google Analytics. And remember timestamps below, if you need to skip ahead to a specific pixel or tag, I'm just going to go in basic order of install when you're just getting started with your tracking. So the first one of course is going to be Google Analytics. Now there might be a little confusion because we are going to be going through Google Analytics Analytics 4, and this is the newer version that came out in late 2020, and we're going to need to find our measurement ID. Now, if you have a UA, I, UA code or universal, you still have Google Universal Analytics, which is the one that's been around for years upon years, that's okay. There's literally a one click difference inside of Tag Manager. So you might have a measurement or property ID. Either way, this is going to work. I won't get too much into the differences and whether or not you should change. So let's go ahead and get our measurement ID or your Google Analytics property ID. So inside of Google Analytics here, either way, you're going to wanna to click on admin and once you do, you'll be able to see your Google Analytics settings. And of course, it's organized in a very similar way to Google Tag Manager, where you have your account and then you have your property. Here, they're called properties instead of containers inside of Tag Manager. So think of it this way. When you click on your account and then you go to click on your property, you should have one container for each one of these properties. So let's go ahead and leave it at Fresh Fans. And then here, we're going to click on Data Streams. If you were looking for your Universal Analytics code, your UA code, you would go ahead and click on property settings. So let's go ahead and click on data streams and we will go ahead and click through and we will copy this measurement ID 
if you were using if you're using the UA code, then you would copy your UA code and go ahead and paste it into your documentation or the tag manager playbook. And now we're going to take this measurement ID or UA code and go ahead and put it into tag manager to essentially have tag manager put it on our website. So let's go ahead and go back to tag manager. I'm going to click on add new tag here. I'll give the tag a name, just GA4 base tag and then we'll go ahead and click on configuration. You can name your tags, whatever you want. You're not gonna get in trouble. Nothing's gonna break if you name it the wrong thing. And we're going to go ahead and click on GA4 configuration. Now, if you have a UA code, you would click on universal analytics. And that is the only difference here. That's the only difference with installing. So let's go ahead and click on GA4 and we'll go ahead and leave this box checked. We will copy our measurement ID or copy it from your documentation and then go ahead and paste it in, leaving this box checked. And now we need to tell Google Analytics when we want this to fire. So this is just the code and it's inside of Analytics or inside of Google Tag Manager now. So now we need to tell Tag Manager when we want this to fire. When do we want to send the information to Google Analytics? So we'll come down here to triggers and we're just going to click on all pages because we want all of the data from every single page into our Google Analytics account. So we'll go ahead and click on all pages here and those are all the settings we need. So we'll come up here to save. And once we do, you'll see we have one workspace change and we can go ahead and click on submit. You can also see workspace changes down here. We have GA4 base tag. So the tag is not actually on our website yet. We're still in draft mode. So let's go ahead and submit it so we can double check our tag live. So we'll go ahead and click on submit. Just go ahead and paste in the basic information on what you did. Uh, it is very important that you actually put in information about what you did because this is going to sit here for years. We have some tag managers that are over 10 years old and so people don't remember what they put in, what they put where. And so uh, it's important that you just put in some basic info. And with that documentation down, let's go ahead and click on publish. And once you do, you will get a quick summary of everything that was installed. So now what we want to do is let's go back over to our website and check that Tag Assistant is, and check using Tag Assistant to make sure Analytics is in fact on our website. So we'll come back over to our website and we'll come up here to click on our Tag Assistant. And now you can see Google Tag Manager is green now. It's firing because it, it has a job to do. And you can see our global site tag has been installed. And so with that, Google Analytics is on your website and if you had Google Analytics installed someplace else, take it off now. It's actually okay if you have a UA code and a measurement ID on the same website. It's okay if you have one of each. It's not okay if you have two measurement, two of the same measurement IDs or two of the same UA codes on your website. So take them off now because you can see that it's working. All right, let's go ahead, go to the Facebook Pixel. So even if you're not using Facebook right now, I recommend installing the Pixel. And the reason that I recommend doing that is it makes remarketing a heck of a lot easier in the future. And it gives you audience data very similar to Google Analytics. It's, it's the way uh, that uh, Facebook is, is trying to compete with Google. They're always trying to outdo each other and we can use it to our benefit. So let's go ahead and go into the Facebook ads account in, into your Facebook ads account and install the pixel. What's cool is you can actually directly integrate. So this is going to be a lot faster. So go ahead and go to Facebook and click on ads manager at the side. And then you can go ahead and click on your icon here and you'll click on events manager. So once you're in events manager, yours might look a little different if you haven't set up a pixel before. But here what we're going to do is we're going to click on add events and then we're going to going to click on from a new website. Now, if you have already put the Facebook pixel on your website in another way, you still wanna go through this process because you're going to use Tag Manager and then remove whatever you did before. So we'll go ahead and click on from new site and we will use a partner integration. Google Tag Manager is right here. So we can go ahead and click on Tag Manager and then we'll go ahead and click on continue. So I'm going to skip some of these, some, some of the steps here. So we'll go ahead and click on continue, go ahead and sign in and then choose your accounts. Make sure you choose the right account and the right container that you want it to be placed on. And then you'll go ahead and click on finish setup. Now, once we click this button, 
Facebook will automatically publish your pixel. So there's no preview, there's no submitting, it goes straight to live. So once we hit finish setup, now it's live on our site. And I'll quickly go through what you can do in terms of adding some detailed events with your Facebook uh, pixel tracking. So you're actually not going to be setting up tags or uh, not tags, you're not gonna be setting up triggers to be tracking events for your Facebook pixel. You'll do it through this interface, which is why we'll go through it very quickly. So let's go ahead and take a landing page from our website and we'll go ahead and paste it in and open the website. Remember, Facebook pixel, the Facebook pixel is on our site with Tag Manager at this point. So we'll go ahead and open and there will be a little dialog box here and it will automatically detect some events that we might want to track on this page. So as an example, it's already detecting that there's a button and when people click that button, we might want to set up a event that counts that person as a lead for the purposes of Facebook. So this is completely detached from Google Analytics and completely detached from anything you do with Google Ads. Facebook is its own little island, or I should say big island. So when we come down here and we click on the little funnel icon, you'll actually be able to edit and change what the event is. So let's say for example, this button, when someone clicks it, we actually want to say, no, they're actually adding their payment information or they're initiating a checkout or adding something to a cart. And once you do this, inside of your Facebook ads account, every time someone clicks this button, Facebook is going to track that and tell you, hey, this many people took this action on your site. And it's also very helpful with conversion tracking. And of course, you can actually set up your campaigns to say, I wanna optimize for people becoming a lead on this page. But I won't get too much into that, so I'll go ahead and click on cancel here. Go ahead and click on finish. No, we don't wanna give feedback. And then we can go ahead and go ahead and click on continue and tag managers on our site. We've gone through a basic walkthrough of how you can add custom events on your pages. You can always just paste in more URLs. We'll go and click on close here. And now I wanna show you how to get back to setting up Facebook Pixel events, just in case you want to do more. So coming back to our Facebook ads account here, all you need to do is click on ads events, and this time click on from the Pixel and then you can open up the exact same tool that we just used. So if you make a new landing page, you have a new shopping cart, you have a new sales page, and you want to track some events on that, drop in the URL here, and then you can use the basic interface, that dialog box that pops up on that page, and you can say, hey, when someone clicks this button, make them a lead, or when someone clicks this button, they've purchased. And so that's how you set that up inside of your Facebook ads account. So let's go back over to Google ads and you'll see that about 11 minutes ago, because of all the cuts it takes me here, the new container was installed. And so what we can do is we can actually go here up here and click on versions. And then we can click on live latest and we'll be able to see that the Facebook Pixel ID was in fact installed and it is live on our website. So if we go back over to our workspace here and we click on tags, you'll see that the Facebook Pixel is also already here. So we can click on it and you'll see that it's using a custom HTML element and our Facebook Pixel is right here. It's installed, it's inside Tag Manager, but there's one more thing, right? We wanna make sure that it is in fact on our website. Now, because it's Facebook and it's not Google, we need to use a different plugin to make sure that it's actually on our website. And of course, make sure you take that pixel ID and paste it into the playbook or your own documentation for easy reference in the future. So let's go over to our landing page here. So this is the same landing page that we were just on setting up that leads event. And when we come up here to Tag Assistant, you'll notice that it's not telling us about Facebook. And that's because the Facebook pixel will not show up in the Google Tag Preview because Google and Facebook, well, they have a pretty big love-hate relationship, right? So let's go ahead and install the Facebook Pixel Helper so we can actually verify that the Facebook Pixel is on our website. So of course we head over to Google to find something for Facebook <laughs> and we'll look for the Facebook Pixel Helper. We can go ahead and add to Chrome, add extension, and then you'll have another icon up here. So we can come back over to our landing page, refresh, and now we'll be able, be able to see the fresh company's pixel. The pixel ID, of course, matches the same pixel that's in our ads account. And this means you are good 
to go. So if you're still watching, hit that like button. You are an absolute champion. Now let's go ahead and switch gears, come back to the, <laughs> the Google sphere of products, and we are going to set up Google Ads Remarketing. Just like what I recommend with Facebook, if you're not doing any Google Ads, remar Google Ads campaigns right now, it's free. It doesn't cost anything to put this on your website so you can do remarketing campaigns in the future. If you're not familiar with remarketing campaigns, that's okay. Just set this up now, collect all of that sweet, sweet data because nothing is retroactive. So if you're going to be doing search, display, YouTube, remarketing, you don't even know what you're going to be doing, please, please put this on your website. All right, I'll get off that soapbox. Let's go ahead and create our tag. So we can go over to search, just search for Google ads. We can sign in or start now. So I'm going to go ahead and just start now. We'll go ahead and sign in. And then once you do, you can go ahead and click on tools and settings, click on audience manager. And if you haven't set this up yet, this is going to be what your page will approximately look like. So let's go ahead and set up your first remarketing tag. And we'll go ahead and click on set up tag here for the Google ads tag. And then we're going to just click on collect general website data. Now there are some restrictions, <laughs> data processing restrictions. And of course it, it has to do with certain jurisdictions, not really wanting uh, certain data to be collected about people. So just go ahead and collect the click on this first one unless you're going to get more advanced. So we'll go ahead and just click on save and continue. And then we'll be able to have different options for adding the tag to our website. It'll allow you to do it, install it yourself. You can email it to someone who's going to do this for you, but you're watching this, which means you know how to use Tag Manager. So let's go ahead and click on Google Tag Manager. You're only going to need your conversion ID. So go ahead, go ahead and immediately copy this, save it to your documentation someplace, and then go ahead and click on continue. And we'll click on done. And now you can see under our audience sources, we have a Google ads tag. So now we've created the tag, but it's just sitting inside of our Google ads account, which means it's time to install it. So let's go ahead, go back over to Google tag manager and click on new tag. So once we click on new tag, we'll go ahead and give the tag a name, just AW remarketing. Google ads used to be called AdWords and I am just forever ingrained with that and I'm always going to abbreviate it AW, uh, mostly because if you abbreviate it GA, then Google Ads and Google Analytics has the same abbreviation and that just gets confusing. So I use AW, uh, you did not need to know that. So let's go ahead and click on tag configuration here and we're going to click on Google Ads Remarketing. So we'll go ahead and click on that and then we will need our conversion ID. The conversion label is optional. When we get to your conversion tracking, you will have to have a label, but here we don't. So we'll go ahead and copy it from our documentation or you can go all the way back into Google Ads and find it. And then we will paste in your conversion ID right here. And now it's time to set up a trigger. So we're putting it inside of Tag Manager. Now we need to tell Tag Manager when it should fire. So we'll go ahead and click on triggering. And it's pretty simple. We just all, every single page we want it to fire. So we'll go and click on all pages. We have all the information we need and we'll go ahead and click on save. Again, we have one workspace change. You'll see down here, AW Remarketing is, has not gone live yet. We just made it. So we'll go ahead and click on submit and we'll give it a bunch of information. Again, just paste in the same information uh, that you used when creating the tag. We'll go ahead and click on publish. And now you can see that we have version three of our container. Version one was Google Analytics, version two was the Facebook pixel, and version three is now has the Google Ads remarketing tag. So that's why you see a total of three tags. It's telling you everything that's on your inside of Tag Manager, not what you just did. So what do we do? Of course, we need to make sure that things actually worked correctly. So hopefully this is going to be a walk in the park for you by the time you're done watching this master class. So let's go ahead and go back to our website. We will refresh the page and now we can see the Google ads remarketing tag is on our website and it's firing on all pages. We'll get to preview mode <laughs> down the road and you are good to go with Google ads remarketing. So now let's get a little more advanced. Let's go ahead and set up a Google ads conversion tag. So what's different here is with your conversion tag, you are tracking a specific 
event on your website. So far, we are just collecting everything under the sun. We've cast a very wide net. And here, we're going to say, you know what? We wanna know when someone takes a specific action on our website. So that's what we're going to do. So what you're going to need is your success or confirmation page URL. So whatever the page is that comes after what you're tracking. So if you're doing landing pages, you want the confirmation page from your landing page. If you're tracking sales, you want the confirmation page after the checkout. And of course, you need the conversion code, which we're going to create. So first we need to create something called a trigger. This is the first time you're going to need to do this. And then we're going to create that conversion code and then add that conversion code to our Google, Anal to our Google Tag Manager account using the trigger that we set up. If that sounded confusing, don't worry. It's going to be a, a promise. It's going to be a walk in the park by the time you're done here. So the first thing we need to do is to create a trigger because we don't want this to fire on all of our pages like we've done previously. So inside of our Google Tag Manager account, I'm sorry, I keep saying Google Analytics. We'll go ahead and click on triggers here and you'll see that there are no triggers. So we need to make one. So we'll go ahead and click on new. We'll give our trigger a name. Now. When it comes to naming your trigger, I like naming it whatever the offer is and then what the event is. So similar with what we did with the Facebook pixel, we chose lead for the event because someone is entering their name and email. That's what we're doing here. We're getting a lead. If someone was uh, buying something, then we would set the trigger as customer or purchased. So here we're going to leave it as lead and then we're going to click on trigger configuration and we're going to click on page view. Uh, now, this is a place where Google and Google Tag, I told you, <laughs> Google Tag Manager really, really shines. And go ahead and play with it in the future. Here, we're just going to keep things very, very basic because nothing's retroactive. You can always get more advanced later. So we'll go ahead and click on page view. And then we're going to click on some pages. You'll see you have a bunch of options. Just go to page URL. And then you can click on contains, equals, and starts with CSS selector. Boy, oh boy, do you have so many options here. Just click equals. I guarantee you, your conversion tracking will work just fine using equals. Do not, you don't need to go through all that other stuff. So now what we want to do is paste in the confirmation page URL here. So whatever shows up after the landing page, after the checkout page, after the shopping cart page, that's the URL we want to put here. Now, if you're using an e-commerce platform, or you have some sort of checkout software that changes the URL of the confirmation page, then of course you would go ahead and change it to contains, and then you'd be able to say, let's say yourwebsite.com slash confirmation. And then whatever the order number is that comes after that confirmation wouldn't matter. Tag Manager would know every time the word confirmation shows up in a URL, it should fire. Now, I don't wanna to get too much into that because it's so, so easy to break. Um, so let's go ahead and leave it at equals. So now that we have that, we are setting up a trigger and we'll go ahead and click on save here. Now, once we've saved that, we need to add what you just did to your documentation so that you know what your confirmation page URLs are and you know what trigger and how you're going to label them. So this is going really going to help you to stay organized. I highly recommend using our template, even if you create your own template, whatever you do, save this in another place so you can easily see how you've set all of your triggers up. You'll see that as you create more and more triggers, it's going to be very, very important. So now it's time to go ahead and create your conversion code inside of Google Ads. So we'll go back into the Google Ads interface and we will go ahead and click on tools and we will click on conversions. Now, if you haven't set up a conversion, you'll have this nice big blue banner asking you to create one. Otherwise you just click the blue plus button that would be approximately here on your page. So we'll go ahead and click on conversions. We want to track website actions. We'll select our category. We are getting leads here, submit a lead form and then go ahead and give it a name. And then for our conversion value, we're actually going to leave this blank. I highly recommend when you're doing collecting leads to just go ahead and leave your conversion value blank. The only time you would want to use 
one of these other ones is if you know exactly what your revenue for the product is. So if you're selling one product and it's always $100, but you have $3 in processing fees and then $2 in administrative fees, then you put the conversion value at 95, right? Um, but for the most part, you'll go through some more advanced things or hire someone to set up data layer things for you. So Google Ads can dynamically pull in those numbers. So for now, just leave it at no action or leave it at uh, no value. And then we're going to track one. So if you're doing purchases, you would track every single one because obviously the more people purchase, the more money you make, but there's no additional value to getting the same email over again. So we'll go and click on one. Then these next couple of settings, I recommend just going with the defaults that I'm going to go through here. So you can go ahead and change how long you want to wait until someone can be tracked as a conversion. So for example, if someone clicked on your ad and then 15 days later, they actually took the action, like they actually gave you their name and email, then it would still count as a conversion for that ad because you've set it to 30 days. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at one day because if they didn't click the ad and opt in, then I don't wanna count them as a conversion. We'll do the last click model, which is what I recommend for everything. And then we'll just go ahead and click on save and continue. And we can jump straight to Google Tag Manager and you'll see we have a conversion ID and a conversion label. So now we need the label, unlike what you did with Google Ads Remarketing. Of course, go ahead and paste it into whatever documentation you're using. Hopefully you, you have some documentation now. And then we'll go ahead and click on next here and we are done we have created our conversion tag. So we created a trigger and we created a tag. So now it's time to put them together. So let's go ahead and add this conversion tag to our Google Tag Manager and make that connection. So inside of Tag Manager, we're going to click on add new tag, <laughs> you guessed it, and we'll go ahead and give it a name. This is going to be a conversion for a lead. And then for tag configuration, we are going to select Google Ads Conversion Tracking. And so once we do, we need the conversion ID and we need the conversion label. So you're going to need both this time. So copy it from the Google Ads interface or your documentation, go ahead and paste it in here. And then for the trigger, this is going to be where things are different. So we're going to click on triggering and now we're going to click on not all pages, but we're going to click on FFA lead, the trigger we just set up. So we're going to be telling Google Tag Manager only fire a conversion when this page loads. And this page, your page only loads after they've taken the action you want them to. So you can see how now we're telling Tag Manager to, we're using Tag Manager to easily help us stay on top of what people are doing on our website and optimize our ads for the actions that we want. So let's go ahead and click on save here. And you'll see we have two workspace changes now. We have the tag that we just added, our conversion tag, and we have the trigger, which is when we want the conversion tag to fire. So whenever you're doing conversion tracking, you should have two workspace changes. And what's really cool is if we do other platforms in the future, we can use this same trigger for that other platform. So that's what's really great. You don't have to make the same trigger over and over again. You can use one trigger and use it for all of your ads platforms. So let's go ahead and come up here to submit. We'll paste in what we did again, and then we'll go ahead and click on publish here. So once we click publish, you'll see now we have a total of four tags. We have one trigger where before it was zero, but we, we made one. And then you can see the two changes that have just been added. So now we need to come back over to our website and check that the conversion tag is actually working. But if you go to your homepage, well, the conversion tag won't fire. And if you go to your landing page, well, the conversion tag won't fire because it's not supposed to fire there. It's supposed to fire on one page, your confirmation page. So what you're looking at right now is our confirmation page for our landing page. And so we can go ahead and refresh the page. And when we click on Tag Assistant, you will now see Google Ads conversion tracking. If you're on a page other than your confirmation page and you see Google Ads conversion tracking, something is wrong. This is the only page where this Google conversion tag should be firing. It shouldn't fire anywhere else. So if any part of this is confusing, make sure you comment below. We do read and reply to every single one. And now there's one more quick step you need to do. And this is to just help Google do their creepy tracking thing. And you'll be able to track people across multiple devices. And this is 
adding something called the conversion linker. Now, nothing special here. This should be done for every Google Ads account you have. So let's go ahead and go back to our tag manager. So we can click on new tag here, untitled, we'll just call it conversion linker. And then when we click on tag configuration, you'll see that I can come down here to something called conversion linker. So I'll click on conversion linker. And to keep things simple, I'm not actually going to check any of these boxes, but what you can do is you can mouse over the question marks and you can see if it would make sense for you to check on these boxes. But for the most part, I like leaving all of these alone by default. I just want it to work the basic way. So then we'll go ahead and come down here to trigger and we will select all pages and then we'll go ahead and click on save. And once we do, we'll have one workspace change, conversion linker, let's go ahead and submit that. Again, this is just something that Google has created to help better improve the accuracy of your conversion tracking. It's nothing really all that special. So we'll go ahead and add our notes here and we'll come up to publish. And now conversion linker is on your website. You don't need to go through checking it. So now we have installed your Google Analytics, we've installed the Facebook Pixel, we have installed Google Ads Remarketing, and we've installed a conversion tag. Make sure you comment below if you have any questions, time spans, time stamps to jump back around. Now I want to go through the new preview mode. So what preview mode allows you to do is it's like tag assistant on steroids. So the benefits of being able to go through the preview mode is you're going to be able to take a really deep dive onto what tags are firing when and how, and you're also going to be able to log how tags fire over time. So you can actually go to your website and start clicking on things or opting in or making um, practice purchases and tag the tag preview mode will actually show you the sequence of all the different tags firing. So you can make sure that literally everything is good to go. Um, with your basic install, this is overkill, but as time goes on, as your business grows and becomes more advanced with your tracking, this is going to be a very invaluable asset. So let's go through just a quick example of how to use the new preview mode, just so you know. Now, this is actually called Google Tag Assistant, not to be confused with Tag Assistant for the, the Chrome plugin we use. So Preview mode and tag assistant are now called the same thing. I'm gonna call it preview mode just so we don't get confused. So if you are familiar with Tag Manager at all, the old version, you used to be able to click on preview and then you'd get this orange box at the top letting you know that you, had, you were in preview mode. This is not how it works anymore. So if you're used to that version, here's the new way to do it. So what we're going to do is check on our tags for our landing page. So going back to our Google Tag Manager account here, we can click on tags and of course we can see a list of all the tags on our website. So I'm going to come back up to overview and I'm going to click on preview mode. Now when I do, we're going to want to paste in the URL of the page that we want to preview. So this can be your home page, this can be your confirmation page, or this could be your landing page. I'm going to do the landing page here. So I'm going to paste in the URL of our landing page. I'm going to include the debug signal in the URL. If something goes wrong and it doesn't seem to be loading correctly, uncheck this. For most websites, it should work. And then we'll go ahead and click on start. Now, when you click on start, if you have Tag Assistant installed, it will open in a new tab. If you don't, it'll open it in a new window. Either way, it's gonna open in a new window or tab. And the way you know it's working is you'll see this dialog box in the bottom right where it says debugger connected. So it shows that you're connected. That means this is working. So we can click a tab over back into Tag Manager and it says, yay, we're connected. So we'll go ahead and click on continue here. And now we can see the tags that fired on this page and most important, and more importantly, the tags that did not fire on this page. So because this is our landing page, you can see that our conversion tag did not fire. If we were doing this for our confirmation page, uh, hopefully it would show that our tag had actually fired and you'll actually be able to click on a option here. You see Google Analytics, you'd have an option for Google Ads and you'd be able to take a deeper dive into how your conversion actually fired and making sure the data layer stuff is correct. If you're doing advanced tracking with, let's say your your pricing of your e-commerce products. So when it comes to the tags that have fired, you'll notice that these this preview should show all the tags for your entire account. And so you'll have the ones that did fire 
and you'll have the ones that did not fire. And of course, you can click through these and you can also come up here and when you start adding events to your Google, your Google Analytics account, you'll be able to start taking deeper dives in here as well. So to turn this off, to disconnect it, all you need to do is click on this X button here and then you'll see that you are not connected anymore. And we can go ahead and just exit out of this preview mode and you'll be able to see some previous history of what you've gone through. So don't definitely don't rely on this saving everything for you, but the last couple of preview versions that you did, it can actually save and you can just click and, and redo and, and recheck. So now that you've gone through preview mode, remember, you need to remove all the tags that are already installed on your website. So it's time to make sure that you have one version of your Facebook pixel, one version of your Google Analytics code, whether it's your UA code or your measurement ID, and one version of your Google Ads remarketing, and of course, one version of your any other tracking codes that you have. So what do you do if things don't go right? So obviously this is a tutorial, so everything went correctly and you're bound to run into a bug, you're bound to run into a problem, something it minorly changes or majorly changes when you try and do this, what do you do? Well, with Tag Assistant, the Chrome plugin, not preview mode, you're going to have essentially three different tiers of colors to let you know whether something is working or not. So green and blue means it's good to go. Blue just means it's not a standard install, but it's still working. So um, think of it as getting like an A minus instead of an A plus. It's not really a huge deal. And then with yellow and red, that means you need to check on something. So yellow tells you that something might not be working quite correctly. And then red is, yeah, nothing's working. You need to fix this ASAP. And so the way to know whether or not it's a big deal is to be able to, you can actually come down here and you'll be able to click on these error codes and then just hop on over to Google and search for them. Because if you're seeing that code, that means thousands of other people have seen that code as well. And someone in the Google forums can explain what is going on. So as long as it's green or blue, it means your tag manager code is good to go. Red means you need to look at the bottom and see whether or not, uh, see what the actual air is and then figure out whether or not it's something that you can fix or you might just need to remove the tag and reinstall it. Now hit that like button if you're still with me. Let's quickly go through what you can do with tracking codes and then some things you can think about for the future with your advanced tracking. So custom codes, what do you do when the code you need to install or the pixel you need to install is not on this list? Great question. So here's what we do. You can go into your Google Tag Manager account you can click on new tag, like we always do. We click on tag configuration, and then you scroll down to custom HTML, and you paste in the code or pixel here, and that's it. This is actually how the Facebook pixel is installed. It's just Facebook figured out that uh, people kept getting confused, and Google, of course, is not going to create a special configuration for Facebook inside of its own interface. And so all you have to do is paste in your tracking code here, and then you can set up a trigger just like you did with everything else. So that's the only difference um, when it comes to tracking codes. You're following the same process. Now, when it comes to it, it, when it comes to actually tracking your data, all of your data is on these other platforms, your Google Analytics, your Facebook ads, your Google ads, all the data is there. Tag Manager does not store any data. Tag Manager is the file cabinet and it's the one that's firing the pixel and then sending the data off, making sure the data is sent off to where it needs to go. So it's not actually storing any of the data data. And so when it comes to your advanced tracking, make sure that you go to whatever ads platform you're using and go through their documentation on how to set up more conversion or event tags or tracking on your site. So thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. Most importantly, you have a couple of pixels or tags installed on your site. Make sure you comment below with your questions. Check out that link to the Tag Manager playbook. It's going to be invaluable as you set this up and stay organized with all of these different codes that you have to keep track of. So go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive tutorials just like this one's, this one, and ones that are a whole lot shorter. So until the next, keep building the business you love.